Hi guys, today we're going to discuss the isochoric process in the thermodynamics of ideal gases. So isochoric basically means that we have a constant volume process. So and we know that when we have an ideal gas behaving in a in constant volume process, we are working with Gay-Lussac's law. Okay, so we will be discussing here the equations that we will be using in solving for processes of ideal gases in thermodynamics under constant volume process, okay? Then, to apply that, we will be solving three problems. So, this will be our first problem in which we will be determining the delta U, delta H, W, and Q. And problem two will be the same as well. We will be solving this problem and calculate for the W, the final pressure, Q, delta U, and delta H. So, we just had a bit of a problem here because we do not have space no, in our worksheet, okay? But anyway, we tried to explain it as much as possible in a way that you will understand even though we have a very limited space right here. So, I hope maintindihan pa rin siya or you will be able to visualize what we are really doing on that problem now and problem number three will be a bit easy but we just want to highlight an important information here that is the condition if you have an irreversible non-flow process okay so it will be useful if you are studying ideal gases in thermodynamics uh, particularly in process in which you have constant volume no so we will not be uh, delaying much on about this topic now let us now jump to our discussion okay so first let us explain what do we mean when we say that we have an isochoric process well on some references you will find them using the term isometric process okay and when we say we have an isochoric or an isometric process we mean that we have a constant volume process. So therefore, on this case, our volume is a constant. And during our study in general chemistry, natutunan din natin that when we have a constant volume process, we are using the Gay-Lussac's law for an ideal gas, in which the Gay-Lussac's law states that the initial pressure over the initial temperature is equal to the final pressure over the final temperature. So this would still apply when we have an ideal gas in thermodynamics. Now the same as what we are using on the previous discussion or our separate video about enthalpy, we will still be using the same formula for enthalpy. Okay, for enthalpy, delta H is equal to N C P delta T or this is also written as NCP T2 minus T1. And the same goes for the internal energy. So our delta U is equal to NCV delta T or NCV T2 minus T1. So the same. We will be using the same equation when we have a constant volume process. Now, let us talk about work. So there are two types of work that we can take note okay on this topic so first let's say we have a non-flow work and we learned this already in our previous video about work tutunan natin that work is equal to negative p dv right so if we take the integral of that we will have the negative integral of p dv in which we will have our w as negative p delta v or negative p v2 minus v1 but since we have a constant volume process in which our volume is constant so our v2 is equal to v1 so therefore this will be equal to zero okay so in that case that means our work will be equal to zero okay so at constant volume process at non-flow work our work is equal to zero. However, if we have an irreversible non-flow work, our work here, which is Wn, is not equal to zero. So in this case, 
our first law of thermodynamics will apply. So we have delta U is equal to Q plus W, right? And for heat, and as we said, for our non-flow work, our W is equal to zero, right? So therefore, using our first law of thermodynamics, our W here is equal to zero. So therefore, our delta U will be equal to Q. Okay, since our delta U is equal to NCV delta T, so therefore our Q will also be equal to NCV delta T or NCV T2 minus T1. Okay, so basically these are the equations that we will be using when we are dealing with an isochoric process. Now to apply that, let us start solving problems. Alright, for our problem number one, we have 3 moles of an ideal gas with Cv is equal to 5 over 2R. And it is heated at constant volume from 25 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. Calculate Q, W, delta U, and delta H. Okay, so as you can see, available na yung mga values natin dito. Now we have our initial and final temperature and our specific heat. So let us write our given here. We have our initial temperature which is 25 degrees Celsius and our final temperature which is 50 degrees Celsius and then our CV. Our CV is equal to 5 over 2 of R. Okay, then we know that our R which is a universal gas constant uh, we could use because we are working with moles and, and Kelvin here now because we have degree Celsius. So we will be using R which is 1.987 calories per mole Kelvin. Okay, so this let us convert to Kelvin. So here we have 298.15 Kelvin and then here we have 323.15 Kelvin. Alright, so we have our CV and we have our T1 and T2. So we can easily calculate for our delta U because our delta U is equal to N CV T2 minus T1. Okay, we have our N here. Now our N is equal to 3 moles. Okay, so we could just substitute our values in here okay so our delta u is equal to 3 moles times our cv our cv is 5 over 2 and r which is 1.987 calories per mole kelvin and then our temperature difference we have 323.15 minus 298.15 and these are in Kelvin. So let us check our um, units. So we have our moles to be cancelled and our temperature Kelvin will be cancelled out. So may iwan sa atin is yung unit na calorie. Okay, so now let us solve this using our calculator. So now we have 3 times 5 divided by 2 times 1.987 then times um, the difference in temperature. So we have um, 323.15 minus 298.15. Okay, so we have 372.56. Um, okay, 372.56. Let us write that here. Our delta U is equal to 372.56 calories. Okay, so tama ba? Okay, so this is our answer here for delta U. Okay, so now we will be solving for delta H. Okay, so our delta H is equal to NCP delta T. Okay, or NCP T2 minus T1. Okay that will be 
easier. Okay, so, but we don't know what is CP. Okay, but we know that CP minus CV is equal to R. So, therefore, our CP is equal to CV plus R. Okay, but our CV is equal to 5 over 2 R. So, therefore, our CP is equal to 7 over 2 of R. Okay, so we will be using this value of CP in here. So, our delta H is equal to 3 moles times our CP which is 7 over 2 of our R. Our R is 1.987 calories per mole Kelvin times the difference in temperature which is 323.15 minus 298.15 Kelvin. Okay, so our units will be cancelled out, our mole and Kelvin. So now we can solve for the value of our delta H. So again, let us use our calculator. So we have 3 moles times 7 divided by 2 times 1.987 then times our temperature difference. So we have 323.15 minus 298.15. Okay, so this is equal to 521.15. Okay, so our delta H is 521.59 calories. Okay, so this is our answer for the value of delta H. So now we need to find the value of W and the value of U. Since we have a constant volume process, our work here will be equal to zero. Okay? And we have learned that already here for non-flow process. Okay? Our work is equal to zero at constant volume process. And we also learned that at constant volume process, our Q is equal to delta U. Which means this is also equal to 372.56. So 372.56 calories. So this is our answer here. Okay? So we already calculated for the value of delta U, delta H, Q, and W. Okay? So let us, let us now proceed to problem number two. Okay, so in here we have 10 cubic feet of air with CV is equal to 0 0.1714 BTU per pound per Rankine at 300 PSIA and 400 degree Fahrenheit. And it is cooled to 140 degree Fahrenheit at constant volume. Then we need to find out A, the final pressure, B, the work, the change of internal energy, D, the transferred heat, and E, the change in enthalpy. Okay? So, first, let us write our given values, no? Para mas mapadali yung ating calculation. Our volume is equal to 10 cubic feet, and we have a constant volume process. Our vo volume here will remain constant. And then, our initial pressure, P1, is 300 PSIA. And our initial temperature is equal to 400 degree Fahrenheit. And our final temperature is 140 degree Fahrenheit. Okay? So, first let us convert this to Rankine. So, we will add 460. So, this is equal to um, 860 Rankine. And plus 460. This is equal to 600 Rankine. Okay? And also our CV is given. Our CV is 0 0.1714 BTU per pound and over Rankine. Okay? So now, first we need to find out the final pressure. So, uh, given ang ating initial temperature, initial pressure, 
and final temperature. That means we can use Gay-Lussac's law because we have a constant volume process. So we will be using Gay-Lussac's law. Okay, so we have P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. So therefore, our final pressure will be equal to P1 T2 over T1. Okay, so let us substitute our values. Our P1 is 300 PSIA times our T2 which is 600 Rankine over our T1 which is 860 Rankine. So let us check our units now. This unit will be cancelled out. So ang may iwan sa atin is PSIA. So therefore, our P2 is equal to, let us use our calculator. We have 300 times 600 divided by 860. So we have 209.3. PSIA. Okay, so we have 209.3 PSIA. Okay, so we have our first requirement. Now, the next requirement is to find the work. So we are in constant volume process. So therefore, our work is equal to zero. So this is our second requirement. We got the work because we are in constant volume process, so equal to zero ang ating work. Next is to find the change of internal energy. So we know that the formula or our equation for calculating the internal energy is delta U. Let me write that in white. Delta U, which is equal to N C V delta T, right? But we don't know what's the value of N. We know CV, we know delta T, but we don't know N, okay? So that means we need to calculate for N, okay? So our N can be calculated by using the ideal gas equation, which is VB is equal to NRT. Because at the initial stage, we know the pressure, we know the volume, we know R, and we know the temperature. Okay, so that means we can get the value of N. So, N is equal to our pressure, which is 300 PSIA. Then, times our uh, volume. Our volume is 10 feet cube. And then, our R. For R, we have 10.731 cubic feet PSIA per mole Rankine. And then over our temperature, our initial temperature is 860 Rankine. Okay, so let us check our units. Our PSI will be cancelled out, cubic feet will be cancelled out, and Rankine will be cancelled out. So what will remain is our unit mole. Okay, so let us now calculate for that. We have 300 times 10 divided by 10.731 and divided by 860. So we have 0 0.325. mole of air. Alright, so now we want to calculate for delta U. So our delta U is equal to N which is 0 0.325 mole times our CV. Our CV here is 0 0.1714. Um, unit is in BTU per pound. Rankine. Okay? And our delta T. So, uh, we do not have space here, no? So, I'll just subtract T2 to T1, which is 600 minus 860. So, we have negative 260. Okay? So, we have negative 260 
Rankine. So let's check our unit. Our Rankine will be cancelled out. Uh, but as you can see, this one is in mole and our R is in pounds. Okay, so that means we need to convert this mole into pounds. And for air, we need to multiply that to its uh, molecular weight. So we have 29 pound per 1 pound mole. Okay, and of course, this is in pound mole now because our R here is in pound mole. So that means in here, this will be cancelled out. Pound will be cancelled out and mole will be cancelled out. So now we could calculate for delta U. So let us use our calculator because because in here, ang may iwan na lang sa atin is yung unit na BTU. Okay? So calculating this now, we have point three two five times point one seven one four then times negative two hundred and sixty then times twenty nine so we have negative four hundred twenty BTU okay so that means our delta U is equal to negative four hundred twenty BTU okay so we got our answer here now the next question is to get the transferred heat so we know that at constant volume our q is is just equal to delta u so that means our q is also equal to negative 420 btu okay Right, so we have a problem here dahil wala na tayong space, but we still need to calculate yung delta H. Okay, so I'm sorry, but I'm just going to write it here, no? Sa maliit na space na nandito. Okay, we already know the value of CP, pero hindi natin alam yung value ng CP, right? So we know that CP is equal to CB plus R. So may value na tayo dito ng CB. And R is a universal gas constant. And we will be using R which is um, 1.985 BTU per pound mole Rankine. Okay, so the problem here is that this is in pound and this is in pound mole. So we need to convert either one of these to make it the same unit. No? So I'll be converting yung CV natin. So... I will convert this into pound mole since we have air in here. So we will be multiplying this to the molecular weight of air. No? So we will just multiply that to 29. So we have 0 0.1714 um, BTU per pound. We run kind times the molecular weight of air which is 29 pound per 1 pound mole. Okay, so therefore, our CB will be equal to um, 0.1714 times 29. So we have 4.97 BTU per um, pound mole run kind, okay, because this unit will be cancelled out pound in pounds okay so now we can calculate for the value of cp we will just be adding cb to our r okay so therefore we have um, our cb which is 4.97 plus our r which is 1.985 okay so our cp is 6.955 BTU per pound mole run kind. So now we can calculate for the value of delta H, which we know is equal to N CP T2 minus T1. Okay, but we do not have space, no? So tanggalin ko na lang to and I will substitute directly. So our N, as we calculated earlier, is equal to 0 0.325 mole. Okay, so 0 0.325 mole then times cp which is 6.955 btu per pound mole rankine times our delta p 
Our delta P, ginamit na natin kanina, negative 260. Run kind, ano? So, check natin ang ating units. Mole will be cancelled out. Run kind will be cancelled out. So, may one sa atin is the unit in BTU. So, let us calculate that again. So, we have 0.325 times 6.955 times our delta T which is negative 260 run time. Okay? So, this is equal to negative 587.69. So, negative uh, let me write that here kasi wala na time space. Delta H is equal to negative again 587.7 um, BTU. Okay, so this is our final answer. Okay, so again, I'm really sorry na ubusan tayo ng space, no? We just tried to um, insert our calculation for delta H here. So I'm really sorry kung nagkagulo-gulo, no? That, but let me just write here a line para ma-distinguish pa rin natin yung um, division, okay, ng ating mga calculations, okay? But anyway, let us go to problem number 3. So, here in problem number 3, we have a closed system of constant volume that experiences a temperature rise of 25 degrees Celsius when a certain process occur. The heat transferred in the process is 20 kilojoules. The specific heat at constant volume uh, for the pure substance comprising the system is 1.2 kilojoule per kilogram per degree Celsius. And the system contains 4 kilogram of this substance. Determine the internal energy change of the work. So, we are looking for the internal energy change. No? So, therefore, we need to find delta U. So, first, let us write yung mga given information natin. No? So, we have a constant volume process. So, our delta V is equal to zero. We have constant volume process. And we have a temperature rise of 25 degrees Celsius. So, that means given na yung ating delta T, which is 25 degree Celsius. Now, the heat transferred in the process is 20 kilojoules. So, our Q is equal to 20 kilojoules. And the specific heat at constant volume, that means our CV. So, our CV is equal to 1.2 kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius. And then, the system contains 4 kilogram of substance. Okay, so our mass is equal to 4 kilogram of the substance. Okay, so we know that our delta U is equal to MCV dt. So, our delta U is equal to our mass is constant and our CV is constant, then we need to take the integral of our dt. Okay, so therefore, our delta U is equal to M C V T2 minus T1. Okay, so now, uh, we could calculate for delta U. Delta U is equal to 4 kilogram times 1.2, uh, our C V, our C V, 1.2 kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius and our delta T. Our delta T is equal to 25 degrees Celsius. So, checking the units, you can see that kilogram and degree Celsius will be cancelled out. So, our delta U will remain in here in unit of kilojoule. So, let us now solve it using our calculator again. So, we have 4 times 1.2 times 25. So, our delta U is equal to 120 kilojoules. Okay, so we already solved our problem here. So, it's easier compared to the first and second problem. No? Nasagutan na kagad natin. But, there's one thing here that um, I would like you to notice. 
Okay, so we have a value of delta u and a value of q here. We are asked to determine the work done. So alam natin, no? if we have a non-flow process, our work is equal to 0. Okay, but in this case, our delta u is not equal to our q. Okay, sabi natin kasi if q is if we have a constant volume process, our q is equal to delta u. Okay, so let us check this using the first law of thermodynamics in which we have delta u is equal to q minus w. So therefore, our w is equal to q minus delta u. Okay, so our w is equal to our q is equal to 20 kilojoules. So we have 20 kilojoules minus our delta u which is 120 kilojoules. So therefore, our work is equal to negative 100 kilojoules. Okay, and this will be our answer kasi pinahanap sa atin yung work. Now, we have a constant volume process but our work is not equal to zero. So it clearly means that the process is irreversible. So we have here process is irreversible. Okay, so this is what we want you to see on this problem that uh, not all constant volume process will give you work which is equal to zero. Okay, so there will be case for irreversible process that our work will not be equal to zero. Okay, so those are the things that you need to take note when you are working at constant volume process or what we also call the isochoric process or the isometric process. Okay, so I hope you learned uh, on this topic and we will be discussing more about the processes in ideal gases for thermodynamics in the succeeding video. But this is all for now. Thank you very much and have a nice day.